Close your eyes and explore your breath. What this means is experiment with different ways of breathing. Long, short, or in short, out long, in long, out short. Fast, slow, heavy, light. Deep or shallow. And then notice what picture you have in your mind of the breath. Which kind of picture is the most congenial, makes the breath feel best. Because the breath really does respond to the mind. You hold one picture in mind that when you breathe in, the energy flows into the body this way. And you experience the breath in a particular way. But there may be some drawbacks. In other words, the energy may flow in some parts of the body, but get tensed up in others. So you try a different perception, one that allows the breath to flow in and out without your having to pull it in or push it out. See what that does. Or you can think of the breath originating in the body. After all, it's the movement of the body that brings the air in, lets it go out. When you hold that image in mind, what does it do? And then you realize that you can create a sense of well-being here in the present moment with the breath. Because the mind needs a place of well-being. If it can't find it here, it's going to go looking for it someplace else. And sometimes it can find some good things, and sometimes it finds some things that turn out to be disappointments. It's like leaving your home to find some security. The best thing, of course, to do is go back to your home and make it a secure place. Make sure that the, the roof is well sealed so it doesn't leak. The windows open and close properly. The doors open and close properly. All the things in the house work well. Then you've got a secure place. You can be, be at your ease. And you can work from home. You can look into your own mind then a lot more easily because the mind won't be scattered around. It'll be right here. And you can watch it as it gets ready to leave right here. And you ask yourself, why? What's the impetus? What's the reason? And sometimes the mind will have good reasons to leave. But a lot of times it's just shiftless. It's tired of being in the house, wants to go outside, but has no real clear re reason to be outside. You say, well, there's more to work to be done inside. This way you're more in control of your thoughts. And you're not so desperate to go have to think about all kinds of things. You've got one big issue right here, which is to understand your own mind. Why is it that even though the mind wants to find happiness, it does things that end up causing stress and suffering? Why is that? What goes on inside? All of this gets obscured if we're running around outside, but when you stay at home, you can look very carefully, because you're coming from a position of stability, a position of strength, and a position of well-being. And that way the mind will begin to open up and you begin to understand where your misunderstandings were, where your ignorance was. And of course, when you bring knowledge, the ignorance has to go away. And John Swartz's image is of darkness. You bring a light into the darkness, and the darkness can say, Well, we've been here for millions of years. You have no right with your puny little light to drive us away. As soon as the light comes, the darkness goes. In the same way, where there's knowledge, the ignorance that used to be there goes. So try to bring some knowledge to these processes that shape your experience, the way you breathe, the way you think, the way you perceive things, the images you hold in mind. When you bring some knowledge here, then when you want happiness, you can do things that will lead to happiness. And the things that lead to suffering and stress, you don't have to do them anymore because you know better. So bring a lot of knowledge, bring a lot of awareness right here, because a lot is going on right here. And the better we know this, the better it will be for us and for the people around us.